Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's interview on the Rich Urban Show. We present news and views from the Inflation Principle point of view. We're very happy to have Jack Hefestay on today. And he's running for county commissioner here in Jefferson County. And um, the unexpired term that used to be Claire F., right, in Charlestown District. Correct. Yes. All right. And um, when does that expire, by the way? It'll be four oh, my more term, years? If, if elected, will be four years. Okay. And uh, if elected, I will take office in December, not January. Oh, okay. Because unexpired terms mean it's held until there's an election. So once the election occurs, uh, uh, the person is seated early. Uh, this just happened a couple of years ago when Peter Onosco uh, ran. He was appointed and he lost the election bid to Ralph Lorenzetti. And Lorenzetti was, uh, was placed in office about a month or so early once the election results were certified. So expecting that again. Okay. All right. Um, great. Well, first of all, uh, please just introduce yourself briefly. That would be great. Well, let's see. I'm Jack Hefestay. I, um, I lived in Jefferson County now for almost uh, 19 years. I think at the end of this week, it will officially be 19 years. I moved here from uh, Virginia. Um, I worked for an aerospace company, and I was uh, still doing Navy, um, and they were kind of located down in Reston and Washington, D.C. So living in, uh, in, in Loudoun County and Leesburg was far more convenient than being here. And then after I retired from both just about the same time, uh, my wife and I decided to move to uh, Jefferson County, which is interesting because this is the old county of my ancestors. Wow. Back to the 17, 1750s, they, they moved into this area. Um, uh, the, my first known ancestor to get here was 17 years old, and he migrated from uh, Germany aboard the British ship Recovery. And he settled uh, in Winchester, and then his son moved to uh, Martinsburg. So we had a couple generations in Martinsburg, and then they kind of fanned out uh, across the uh, uh, the Mid Atlantic region to Maryland, and uh, we've been. I even had an ancestor who moved to Shepherdstown. So uh, this All is right. the, this is the old Homestead area for me. So I'm uh, glad to be back. I love it here. Great, great. Okay, well, um, let's jump right in. On I think, um, yeah, and we'll make sure you know you have time if you want to share anything we don't happen to talk about about your vision as. Um, you know, commissioner, but uh, let's, I think let's jump in. So what do you think about solar development in Jefferson County? Well, I am against solar development in Jefferson County. And here's why. Uh, when it was first presented uh, to the community, to th the different boards, it was uh, presented as it was going to be very, very helpful to the county, good for us, yada, yada, yada. And we were going lot of benefits out of it and it was going to be practically invisible so uh what we found out was is that um and this is out of the mouth of the solar people less than one percent of the energy generated from the current one that's in operation less than one percent it goes to west virginia at all most of it just goes into a power grid uh, now that the uh the plant i hate it being called a farm because it's more like a compound or a factory, but that area, most of that stuff is uh, uh, is complete, and they're still trying to do stuff to uh, fix it up and enhance it, uh, getting all the panels to work at the same time. And I think they told us that on a good day, they're only getting like a 68%. Um, the other thing that was when it was brought before us, it was- uh, Oh, just that 68% like of what? Are working of the, or- a what yeah, they of, of the power, it only gets uh, six, 68% of its potential power on a good day. Has Is that because of, of the uh, lack of sun or some other reason? They said on a good day, it's 68%. So I'm assuming that's a nice sunny day. So, uh, 
but anyway, uh, most of these uh, solar farms are 40-year leases. Uh, they're bonded. Um, the bad news is the the bonds at the end of the 40 years, if if the uh, if the solar uh, factory goes belly up, uh, that money isn't going to be worth pennies on the dollar in 40 years. And uh, That's true. that land will never be returned to farmland. Um, a lot of the topsoil was stripped off. Some of it is retained so that they can uh, grow some plants. But basically, it's not a good deal for Jefferson County. Uh, now that it's it's operational, uh, most of the people that work there, a couple of people run panels and, and monitor the, the functions uh, the computer via computer. But most of the people that work there are going to be uh, are handling a weed whacker or a lawnmower. Right. Um, so it's it's not a good deal for Jefferson County. That uh, the, the the farm that I'm talking about is Blake Solar. Right. Uh, they they were the first one. Uh, there are four more coming. Uh, Hopefully not. Coming. But anyway, go ahead. Then, well, uh, I don't think they can be stopped at this point. Um, and they're they're using three thousand three hundred and ninety eight acres of uh, what was farmland. So it's a big chunk of land. Mm. Um, they're all in different stages of, uh, of of being instituted into the county. It's uh, to me, it's a real uh, it's a real shocker because to me, it wasn't what was presented, what was initially presented, and it was supposed to help the farmers. Yeah, right. And basically, most of the, most of the farmers that had the land are selling their property at outrageously high. Uh, uh, values, which is good for them, but it's really, really horrible for the people that live there. Mm. Uh, anybody who uh, thinks that solar is a good deal and not a problem should drive down Cable Town Road. Yeah, and agreed. And also, I've seen the runoff in, in the river. Okay, the let's move along up from bad. that. Um, yeah, I agree. Okay. No, no, no worries. Wait, since you don't have a super long time, about 30 minutes, I wanted to get um, your... Okay. Anyway, one other question. Would you work to repeal the so-called solar amendment? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would. Uh, actually, I was delighted when uh, Jennifer Krauss uh, brought it up and she and uh, Tricia Jackson supported the re repeal of the solar text amendment. However, <clears throat> the comprehensive plan is under revision and will be going forward. I think it's already been uh, sent to the uh, the county commissions for them to review, and uh, it it might be a, a better idea if we could fix the zoning uh, mm -hmm. in the in the comprehensive plan and keep uh, new solar uh, farms. Or, uh, like I say, if you like solar, you're going to love the wind turbines because that's next. Uh, okay. There is so you more, would more brand new energy deals that are coming to fix that. Yeah. The, I agree. Yeah, I definitely current, want to fix it. The current solar doesn't even fit with a comprehensive plan anyway. All That's right. Correct. This could go on for some time because it's such a big issue, but I do want to cover a few other things. We could loop back around. All right. Know, if we have time. What You were talking about uh, Jennifer uh, Krauss and Trisha Jackson. As you know, there's a current case to remove them. And uh, what is your opinion? Should prosecutor Matt Harvey be pursuing that? Should that have been dropped? I mean, I know it's way past that point now. What's going on here? What's your opinion on that? Well, first of all, I thought the two commissioners were overcharged. Um, it was a lot of misdemeanors. There weren't any felonies involved. And a lot of the misdemeanors were, in my humble opinion, just that they were opinions. They weren't really anything that, was, uh, that, that did any damage. Uh, the point I keep going back to is the, the the county commission was functioning just fine as a four member commission. Uh, the controversy was replacing uh, Claire Ath when she after she resigned. Incidentally, she resigned to become a lobbyist and she wound up being replaced by a lobbyist. So Claire Ath had the ethics to resign. But they replaced her with the person that had the same problem. I thought she moved. So that, is she still living in, in the county? I don't know. I, oh, I saw her I saw her husband just recently and their their uh, house deal fell through. 
They're both very, very nice people. Uh, Claire had a lot of ethics, and I salute her for that. Uh, but I think that the, the process on replacing her was fairly much flawed. As you know, uh, they use code, and the code, in my opinion, if you read the code yourself, it, it talks about counties with three commissioners. Most counties in, in West Virginia have three commissioners. There right, I did read five. it. Yeah, there's two that have five, uh, Jefferson and Berkeley. And there was some controversy about that. And um, I think uh, one of the commissioners pushed back on that, citing a lot of problems and didn't want to go forward because if they pick somebody, it could be overturned, yada, yada, yada. Well, now we're into that situation. Uh, moving on, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, kick up any feathers that I don't have to. But I think that once they were seated and the person uh, was selected, that the uh, uh, the, pers uh, the prosecuting uh, attorney should have uh, dropped the charges. Uh, okay. And I, that's a big kerfuffle for the county and will cause a lot of instability in uh, what we're trying to do for the benefit of the county. Yeah, and you wonder if there's some, uh, some obviously, some kind of agendas going on behind that. Okay, I'm glad to get your opinion. Well, I that. think there is. If you want me to comment on what I think the agenda is, I certainly can. You can. You're all free to speak anything you want. Go ahead. Well, uh, uh, what happened is, is once the uh, it became known that the, the two uh, commissioners were anti-solar, that's when the kerfuffle uh, began. So I think that it was uh, uh, an attempt to oust them because they were anti-solar. And my hunch is uh, uh, some of the people that are currently sitting on the, uh, on the commission, um, the president has uh, a lot of, uh, he's a developer, he's a realtor, he has his finger in a lot of solar stuff. Uh, he uh, typically excuses himself for meetings when solar is being discussed. Um, the replacement for Claire Ath is a lobbyist for Green New Deal Energy. So he has a lot of, uh, of conditional problems with, uh, with this type of stuff. And, and He's I currently think he a should, lobbyist he, right now? He is still a lobbyist. And so that, that doesn't sit well with me. Uh, I'm not a lobbyist. I'm not a realtor. I don't have a special agenda, which is one of the reasons that I'm running. I'm retired. I don't need any more money. I'm, all the money I get from, the, from my pay, I'm donating to local nonprofits or national nonprofits. Okay. So I'm not in to make more money for myself, and I, I get the feeling that some people are in it for uh, additional money. That's, okay. that's my perception. All right. Very good. Yeah, I mean, not, it's a very good thing, but I'm glad to know your opinion on it. Um, so what, it, what, in your opinion, is the biggest issue like facing Jefferson County right now? Well, the budget is always, always the problem. Uh, but a lot of that, um, it all ties, a, a lot of it ties in, not all of it, but a lot of it ties into uh, solar. Because solar has put a big ripple in the county. Uh, we pride ourselves on tourism and agritourism and uh, the, the solar uh factories are right along the main highways. They're going to be shown to everybody. It's also been brought up uh, recently by uh, another uh, candidate, uh, Michael Mood, who is a, a firefighter, uh, uh, fire chief down at Mid Middleway uh, Fire Department, that uh, a lot of the, uh, um, the solar uh, panels are prone to fire and most of the fire departments cannot handle putting out a fire that is mm. generated by lithium or other things. So we could have a really, really bad uh, brush fire that turns into a, a catastrophe uh, like uh, Palestine, where we, in uh, I think that was in Ohio, where there's a fire or an accident and a lot of those uh, panels yeah. are being put on fire. I think and I the fire departments can do it. Yeah. I think I saw one of the. My, uh, like Michael Mood talking about or writing about that, one of the uh, proposed solar compounds has uh, a bunch of lithium batteries. I don't. I'm yes. not aware that Blake has it, but maybe one of the other ones. Yes, and I think it's something that needs to be looked at. I'm I'm not a hip shoot, a person that hit, shoots from the hip. 
I would like to get more information on exactly what they have, how bad of a problem it is, and if we can solve solve it, uh, that would be great. Um, but I, I think it's a real danger to the community, and it's something that needs to be looked into. Okay. Now, so, to answer your actually answer your question, the, the budget. Yeah, how does the budget is tie the in? The budget all? is a problem, and the budget is a problem because, as you know, everybody in Jefferson County wants something special for themselves or for their pet project, and I understand that. But we only have a certain amount of money. So the budget needs to be adjudicated very, very carefully. And my opinion is, is uh, some of these organizations that request budget uh, items do a lot of fundraising on their own. And they're the type of organizations that I would be most willing to support. Uh, for instance, uh, the fire departments, the police, uh, EMS, uh, the ambulance people are, are great. They're all wonderful, mostly uh, volunteers. And, uh, and they should get a, a close look when we do funding. But there are other uh, organizations like the Historic Landmarks Commission that does a lot of fundraising on its own uh, to help along their projects. And those are the type of organizations that I like best, um, the, the ones that help themselves uh, along with the, the county. Okay. So, yeah, funding funding is, uh, is the toughest issue. And I'm, I'm pretty fair. Uh, so you mean that, being I, I judicious with the funds? Since it's judicious, always- and, and I want to make prudent uh, allocations. And, I, I, you know, I, I I would like to see, for instance, I would like to see the fire department, uh, not the fire department, the police department <clears throat> members get uh, raises. Mm-hmm. And they were, I think, d- denied a raise, in, a raise again this year. And that's that's tough because they do a great job for us. Uh and I'm talking about the, the sheriff in particular, his mm-hmm. organization. So okay. there are others, too. But we and I listen to those budget deliberations every year and people ask questions. But I don't think they're asking really tough questions. That's a lot of the, the questions I consider to be tough, uh, uh, softball questions. And I think we really need to get in there and find out You're what's right. going on. So, uh, yeah, budgeting is, is the toughest thing. I, I, okay. Those are, all those organizations are deserving of something. I'm not yeah. suggesting anybody be thrown out. But. Okay. Let's segue to um, you're talking about budget. Yeah. So with the current, the ambulance service has been consolidated, as we know, and there's no more ambulance service up here. I'm in Shenandoah, by the way. Up here on the mountain at the Blue Ridge Fire Department, either one, neither station has an ambulance. Uh, some people, and I think including myself, feel that's not the best thing. That's increasing response time. How would you respond to that? Of course, that's a budget concern, but also there was one before. What's going on with that? What's your opinion about it? Well, my opinion of that is it should not have happened. Uh, the mountain certainly deserves their own ambulance and fire group. I mean, because I've uh, visited the mountain area many, many times, and it's not exactly the easiest place to get to, drive to. Uh, The winding roads, the beautiful scenery are wonderful, but uh, when you're moving at a high rate of speed, getting to somebody quickly. Also, Middleway was stripped of their ambulance, and I think uh, Bakerton. So there were actually three um, areas that lost uh, their ambulances, and that's just not right, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's, of course, it's it's increased the response times in uh, and made them much better in uh, Charlestown, but not much of the rest of the county. And I don't think that should be. I'd be favor. I would be in favor, quite frankly, of uh, getting those uh, ambulances back where they came from, and or look at uh, some other alternative. But I don't think that the those outer outer areas should have been stripped. Okay. Uh, all right. That, that's fair enough. Okay. What about the issue of election integrity? So it's my, uh, through studying, I, I believe I'm right. Each county can choose their own um, election equipment. I mean, it has to follow the state guidelines, but there's no reason mm-hmm. here that we have to use, for instance, voting machines. And I'll give you a, a short, like, uh, anecdote, <laughs> not anecdote, but anyway, so in 2016, you know, up here at one of the bigger precincts at Blue Ridge Elementary, things moved along very well. There were about 
there's two, depending on your alphabet, there's two polling stations, but each one had like eight stations. Then in 2020, they went to all uh, electronic and it moved very slowly because they went to three machines on each side and no paper stations. And, but that's just a matter of speed. But also, what about the integrity of the voting system? Many people believe that machines, not believe, it's a fact. They could be hacked. Why are we using the machines? Also, the counters, there's been many problems shown, like in Arizona and elsewhere, the counters, we, which count that even if you use paper ballots, they can screw up. In West Virginia, I read the code, they can be hand counted and they are in smaller areas. How co- oh, in short, how can we ensure election integrity here in Jefferson County? Well, uh, I may have a unique opinion on that. Um, I've worked uh, as a poll worker the last three elections. I'm familiar with the process in Jefferson County. I believe it is being run very well. And yeah, you go in and those machines are hooked up uh, to a light, uh, to a power plug. They're not on an Internet. The screen comes up and you punch in uh, who you vote for. Then you press the button and it prints a, a paper ballot. Right. You can look at the paper ballot to verify that who you voted for is who's filled in on the little circles. And then right. you put it in the envelope. You take it over and you feed it into the machine and it's counted there. Uh, and they have a, a, a little thumb drive. And they pull the thumb drive when you take the uh, the equipment back into the uh, to the county mm-hmm. clerk, and they run it. So we get our, our election returns pretty quickly. Now, okay. as far as integrity is concerned, if there is a problem, we still have all of those paper ballots that are marked. They can be counted by machine or by hand. And uh, I believe after the election, a couple of days after the election, uh, the county clerk, clerk and the election uh, people, uh, who, by the way, do a fabulous job, uh, mm-hmm. uh, do a verification of the process. And a, a, they pull a couple of precincts at random out of a hat and they a, they do a, a hand count to make sure that it matches the. I what think they, they do one. But I was yeah. like asking about like, um, for instance, on the. I'm particularly interested in the school levy thing. I'm interested in all everything, but yeah. the school levy, you know, the so um, the school schools take up 76 percent of our property taxes, and uh, about 40 percent, I think, of that is the excess levy. That's, uh, I mean, to me. So anyway, the point is, and I think they've changed the law. It has to be on the ballot, main ballot. But in 2015, very few people voted on that. Even 50 votes or 100 or 200 can can swing it because it was like a special election. I think they've changed that now. I, I have to double check that. I hope so. But the point being, so the integrity is important. Oh, anyway, I called the office, the clerk, I think Jackie Shadel. Yeah, Jackie. And she said, if you wanted a recount, you know, it would cost tens of thousands of dollars. So it's not quite so simple like you indicate. Yeah, I could uh, ask for a recount <laughs> if I want to pay for it. <laughs> you know? So, well, you know, I, I, let, me, let me just give you a little comment on that. Um, the school board elections, the levy in particular, I think I remember that election because I think I worked the polls that, that time too. And... Uh, my feeling was, is that a uh, levy election should have occurred at, at a general election, right. not at a special election, because the special election turnout is absolutely pathetic. It should be on uh, the main the main election times. I think and they've changed that. Understood- I'll verify that. Yeah. What I understood was, is they, they did that. They wanted the special election. So if failed, they could do it again. And again and again until it passed. So that's kind of unethical to me. Um, but I, I think I think it's wrong to do that. And if we're if everything is on the general election um, for levies, I prefer that over uh, special elections. I don't like special elections. In fact, I was at a commission meeting where they actually uh, the five commissioners turned down the, the school board 
the Board of Education who wanted a special election to get more money. And they said, no, if you want it, you're going to have to pay for it. And then they weren't interested in it anymore. So I think yeah. uh, things are writing themselves. It's just slower than I would like. So do you know if it was changed about, I did read that previously that, you know, that is, and that's an expense for the county. Uh, you know, oh, oh, it failed. We'll just do it again. No, that's not right. And no, I, think I agree. It's been changed to go now on the on the general election. I have to verify that, but I'm not sure. I, if they I can think bring you're it right. I think I heard something like that. Enough people squawked uh, uh, against it, and so I think it's being uh, righted. It should have never been the other way, in my opinion. But. Mm -hmm. So uh, g talking about. Um, you know, funds, most of the funds come, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, from property taxes, if not most. Oh, you are correct. And our property taxation is, wait, well, you tell me, actually, I don't know the exact figures, but it seems to me our tax rate level is much higher than most counties in West Virginia. Plus, I do know it's a fact that almost 77% of our taxes go to the public schools about 40 percent of that is the excess levy so is there something we can do to make this like more more better process or should the tax rates be lower or what well my opinion on this uh topic is that the uh impact fees were lowered to a real small amount it's it's got to be less than 10% what it was uh, several years ago. And the new, I the think new housing, $1 or something. Yeah, it's, it's, well, what they it is, it's great, it's great for the builders. It's great for the, um, the developers and the, um, and the realtors, but it's awful for the people who are already living here because those impact fees should be, there should be good, strong impact fees for, for new communities that will help the school burden, uh, highways, uh, roads, the, uh, the infrastructure. It would certainly, if we had better impact fees, we would have more money to give uh, mm -hmm. to fire police and uh, ambulance. But I think so the I think, well, yeah. go ahead. I mean, but I, th I think lowering the impact fees was uh, a travesty and hmm. it needs to be corrected as soon as possible. It's probably. But I think legally, though, like uh, recently, I think there's discussion about that because. Jane Tab wanted to raise them up again. Is that impact fees are supposed to be to, uh, how do you say, mollify or whatever, is that's the right word, take care of the impact of more students. And But instead of more students, I think maybe hopefully partially because of the Hope Scholarship and other programs, the enrollment has been declining. Therefore, there's no legal basis for impact fees for schools. I don't think that the impact fees go for anything else. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, what I understood, it was mostly for uh, schools or what I call infrastructure. Um, that's what I keep hearing people say. But I think uh, uh, Jane Tab was correct uh, in, in wanting to raise uh, the impact fees. I agree with that because the new, the new housing that's coming, the high density housing in particular is coming in bring a lot of families, a lot of children, and that's a big impact on the schools, highways, and, and mm -hmm. other other things. But the stats so the don't bear it out in the last 10 years. Roma did well, not. You're, not, you're not comfortable with the elections, but you're comfortable with those facts. And no, I think no, I'm talking about <laughs> school enrollment statistics. That, well, well, I'll assume those statistics you, are on the level, no, I hope. No. No offense to any of our wonderful teachers that we have here, but if I had children that were school age, they'd either be homeschooled or be going to a private school right now because I think uh, some of the stuff that's going in the public schools is just not right. Right. Well, and that might be part of the reason for decline in enrollment. Yeah. And by the way, you know, only like 1% of those excess fees, I looked into it, and it's not very transparent. That's kind of more another topic but only like something like 1.5 percent not something like less than two percent went to the teachers it was just a token it's like oh let's give a one percent bonus to the teachers what do those fees go for you know twenty thousand dollar bonuses the diversity director whatever the bloated staff 
anyway, the, the admin uh, staff is happened. outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Admin uh, for a lot of the schools is is just out of out yeah. of uh, it out of sync with the, the way it should be. All right. Well, as we're kind of winding down, what is there some other things that are on your platform or just on your heart or on your mind? And also, you if you want to differentiate differentiate yourself from your opponent, you know, kind of give like a winding up or you know whatever else you'd like to say well the one thing we really haven't talked about we touched upon was transparency i'm for 100 percent transparency uh i don't have anything personal against my opponent uh i would just have having uh participated in numerous forums with him uh i'm a little surprised because he seems to have uh quick draw answers uh to everything and he's going to, you know, he's ordinance happy. Uh, he's going to write an ordinance or he's going to propose an ordinance. And he keeps doing that over and over again. And the, the problem with an ordinance is he's going to need two other votes if he's on the county commission. And the people who are most likely to support those ordinances are the people that he has come out against. So he has uh, trashed, uh, come out against Jennifer and Tricia. And they would be the people that would most likely support his uh, platform. A as for me, um, I have a long history in the Navy and working at an aerospace company with working with people that don't necessarily agree with me. I think I could build collaborative efforts uh, with people that are uh, uh, currently on, on the county commission. I get along with all of them. I don't have I don't have a problem with anybody. I would just like to see some things done differently. And I think it's very important for the county. Uh, we don't want to go uh, belly up because of the budget. Uh, the fact that we've had so many uh, administrators uh, turnovers and in the administrative decision, it's a wonder that it's going as well as it is. So I would like to offer some stability. Um, um, I'm a retired uh, Navy veteran uh, uh, 25 years in the United States Navy, where I reached the rank of captain, which is like a bird colonel. I worked 30-some uh, years in uh, in aerospace at uh, one of the largest companies, uh, Lockheed Martin. And uh, I'm happy to say that nothing I ever worked on uh, ever blew up <laughs> intentionally or otherwise. <laughs> it, was all, it was all pretty uh, interesting stuff. I'm proud to it. But uh, some of them, a lot of them were classified. I can't talk about them. But I have uh, experience working with big budgets, a uh, diverse group of people, uh, and people that didn't always agree with me because I was mostly a process engineer, and most engineers just wanted to be left alone and do their own thing. Uh, and sometimes they, they were forced, they had to go down the, the path. So uh, I'm used to those kind of challenges, and I think uh, uh, the number of years that I have um, experience uh, there would be a big differentiation for me and a nice young fellow who wants to get involved. And I think he, he probably will continue to, uh, to look for other opportunities as the years go by, if he loses and more power to him. But for right now, I think I'm the right person for the job. I've been endorsed by Alex Mooney, uh, Riley Moore, um, Kent Leonard, who's uh, agriculture commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ridenauer and numerous other people in the counties. That, that know me and think I will do a good job. I'm a listener. I don't like to, yeah, here's the easy, fast solution. I like to think about it and get inputs from various groups before I enact on anything. Um, so uh, that's basically where I am. I, I, you know, I've done it before, done things like this before, and I would like to do them again for Jefferson County. Lived here for a long time. I love this place, and I don't want to see it going down of uh, the wrong path. Okay, well said, well said. Well, Juan, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And um, I'm gonna thank you for having make, me. Yeah, I'll make this available on a podcast on any platform, The Rich Urban Show. You'll, you'll find it if you search Rich Urban Show or also on a video format on our website, visionroot.org. Um, okay, so I'm going to... Uh, Thank you for joining us. Today. Happy to join you anytime. You're a fine gentleman. So.